Hey, this is Dave Diederer from the Presidents of the United States of America, and I am locally grown. I would go to Dick's on 45th. I would get a cheeseburger, fries, and chocolate shake. I would sit on the curb under the sign out by the street. I would uh, hope that it was a beautiful fall day and I would go to a Husky football game. Uh, I think would be fun. That would really takes me back to my childhood. Started going to games when I was four or five and kind of grew up in that neighborhood. Then I'd go for a bike ride around the north end of Lake Washington. Um, and then, let's just say it was an early snow year, then I'd go up to Alpental and go night skiing for a few hours. I'd get back to town 11 or 12 and I'd go to the 13 Coins and have a, a fettuccine Alfredo, I think, with the, and I'd have multiple plates of the antipasti, you know, that they bring. And, uh, and then I think it'd be done. That'd be a good day in Seattle. I saw you. It was incredible. It's miserable in the winter and in, um, at least musically, I think a lot of the music from around here is a reaction to that. You just kind of go crazy. And, and I think, you know, I think back to the Whalers and the Sonics and the Kingsmen, a, and I think of that as the real um, bedrock of Northwest rock and roll scene. It was always funny when the presidents were on tour, we'd be in, in Germany or somewhere, and, and guys would say, you're from Seattle, you're not grunge, you're not depressed, how can this be? This is not normal, it's not possible. And we'd say, well, no, you don't understand. There's like, that's... The grunge thing was sort of, number one, Nirvana's funny. I mean, you know, read the lyrics to Smells Like Teen Spirit. It's rooted in this, you know, just like drunk teenagers trying to have fun on a Friday night. You look at the Sonics, they were just these out of control, uh, crazy kids from Tacoma who wanted to rock out and have a good time. It's, uh, you know, November and it's rainy, it's a Friday night and you live on Capitol Hill, well, your parents have a basement and maybe there's a room and you put carpet up on the walls and you get some amplifiers and a drum kit and you get a case of Schmidt beer and you go down and drink the beer and make loud noise to just <laughs> ease the frustration. Starting in the late 70s, early 80s, I was able to go out at night and there were some great bands at that time. There were two bands the Heaters and the Cowboys, who um, in, in, in a later era would have broken out and been national successes. They were both super, super great rock and roll bands and they used to play a lot. There was a band called the Blackouts who were fantastic and members of that band went on to be in ministry and uh, Bill Rieflin, the drummer, has played with R.E.M. and others uh, off and on over the years. The Fastbacks was a band who were kind of in the Sonics, Kingsman, Wailers, along with the Young Fresh Fellows, this sort of good time party rock, out of control, loose, um, good time music. I used to be able to rent those Northwest rooms at the Seattle Center where now um, KEXP is moving in and the Vera Project are there. You could just rent one of those for the night for a hundred or two hundred dollars. So we'd pool some money, somebody would bring a PA from their practice space, you get a keg of beer if you could pull it off and not get busted and charge people a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. You know who I really like, and she's already made it, is Brandi Carlisle. I just totally am crazy for her. I just, her voice just gives me goosebumps. You know, the cream does rise to the top. She's spectacular. And how, I don't know how you go from Maple Valley, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, to doing what she's doing now, but uh, I find her totally amazing and inspiring. Um, I have enjoyed uh, Macklemore's success the last few months. It's just been amazing. You know, um, I don't listen to a ton of hip hop, but I listen to a little bit. Um, and then our, uh, w I worked for years with David Minert, who, um, you know, worked with um, a bunch of other regional hip hop artists who, who kind of almost broke through, but didn't quite. And to see Macklemore break through is just, it's so awesome. You know, I know like a year, year and a half ago, all my nephews and nieces who are teenagers, you know, they all had a few Macklemore songs on their phones or their iPods. And I think every 15 year old kid, you know, in like a 30 mile radius around Seattle, he was a superstar to them already. And then to see that scale up over the last few months is just so cool. Slim, relaxed, fine wine at the QFC. 
I'm a little too young for the Stan Borison show, but Stan Borison was an amazing entertainer. He's still alive. Uh, singer, musician, accordion player. He had a very popular kids entertainment show here in the 50s and 60s. And actually, my only guitar teacher ever was the guitarist in his band for many years. J.P. Patches was local TV when I was a kid. He really, you know, was Seattle TV for my generation because there wasn't that much else happening. Um, a big show in my world, not because of the show, but because of the impact on the local uh, media community was Northern Exposure. Um, but I had a ton of friends who worked on that show and who continued to work in film and TV. I mean, the, the film and TV industry r here really started in earnest with, with Northern Exposure. There are a ton of people who cut their teeth on that, and a, a lot of people I know who still have jobs because they, you know, created a, learned their craft on that show. And uh, so that, that show was a big deal. Black pearls, and I swear you were drinking. At the market is near and dear to my heart. Uh, my dad was one of the founding members of the Market Foundation, founding board members. And then in my most recent past professional life in public affairs, I did a big project for the market to celebrate their centennial, um, which I organized. And then we actually had a concert on the down in the market there um, with me and other members of the presidents and Pearl Jam and other guys celebrating Seattle music. So I really feel attached to the market. Um, the guy I miss is Jim, who was the busker down there for years. It was a guy who was an ad agency executive, very, very successful guy up until his 40s, early 50s, and he just decided, screw this, I don't want to do this anymore. He became a busker at the market and he was kind of uh, one of the many unofficial mayors of the market. There are a lot of interesting characters down there who um, who owned the place collectively. He was just always so happy to be down there playing his guitar and singing and uh, talking to people. It didn't matter, rain or shine, it'd be the shittiest day, you know, gloves on, trying to play the guitar. He just so pleased to be down there doing his thing. So I, I've, uh, he's a real inspiration. You were the redhead behind the counter there. Would I want, what would I want to vend? Would I want to vend Music? Would I want? I'd, would I want to be a fish thrower? I don't. I would definitely would not want to be a fish thrower. Um, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of the fish throwers. I generally, they go around. I don't want. I, and you don't make eye contact because if you make eye contact with the fish throwers, it's all over. What would I want to sell? I think I'd want to. I'd probably want to play music. So you just do it for an hour and you're done. <laughs> you <laughs> sell anything else, or maybe do it for a couple hours and you're done if you're any good. If you sell anything else, you got to get down there at, you know, like six in the morning and you got to set up. And that sounds like a lot of work. You had your dry cleaning and I think you're dreaming. It's a truly open forum for people of all stripes to come and, you know, share their opinion about how the world should be run. But everybody feels like they own the place, because they do. Because without those people and the, and the goods and services they bring every day, the place doesn't exist. And in really, to the people who visit, which, you know, uh, a lot of the year is tourists, but also locals, um, you know, go, being able to walk through the day stalls is just as important as being able to go down to De Laurentiis and get a salami. That's one of the cool things uh, about Pike Place Market or any of these big organic uh, communities where people can come and go and check in and check out and people feel ownership. That's the main thing. People really feel ownership and they're proud of it and they, they believe in, uh, in what they're doing. It's a, it's a fascinating dynamic. I saw you 